Uh, joining us now is uh, Frederico Joel Sander, Senior Country Economist with World Bank India and Honor Rule, Country Director at the World Bank. But uh, I'm going to start with Mr. Sanders and get his view on, uh, you know, the nature of the growth that the World Bank is projecting for the Indian economy. Can you run us through that? Uh, so over the last uh, six months, we saw you know, clearly some negative developments in the global outlook uh, that was reflected very much during the annual World Bank IMF meetings in Lima that uh, we see a slower growth in the international economy than we saw before. And looking at India, we saw that exports have actually have disappointed from what we were expecting six months ago. Uh, and I think that that is the reason why you know, some, some observers have actually downgraded their, their outlook on the Indian economy. But we actually also saw some positive developments over the past six months, which on balance led us to maintain our outlook unchanged. Uh, so first of all, we see that actually not only did the government budget more for capital expenditures, but actually execution of capital expenditures has increased over the last six months. Uh, in addition to you know, more funds being directed to the states and allowing the states to also increase uh, their spending at that level. And second, uh, you know, oil prices, which were you know, a big help to India's uh, growth in the previous fiscal year, actually did take another, uh, you know, they did decline again back in June, July. So the, the prices that seem to be creeping up actually have now come down again, closer to the levels that they were in, in January. So we think that that also will help with the outlook this year. So on balance, you know, a bit weaker uh, external environment, but, uh, you know, some, uh, some evidence of growth picking up, especially investments picking up uh, in India. Uh, we think that India can grow at 7.5% for this fiscal year. Okay, what key measures, policies and reforms should the government really be focusing on to accelerate the growth momentum? Yes, yeah, so going forward, I mean, uh, we think that India can grow without uh, export growth maybe this year, maybe next year. But in the long term, India really needs to boost uh, export growth in order to maintain a high level of uh, GDP growth. So in order to do that, I mean, we think that the, the kind of the regulatory reforms that make it easier uh, to start and operate a business, uh, that those are going to be very important in terms of facilitating greater business creation, both in services and manufacturing. Uh, but the big one that I think that we always emphasize is on the importance of GST. Uh, we think that GST is actually going to have a significant impact on productivity growth. Um, a lot of basically unproductive time and activities are, you know, take place because of the current fragmented system of uh, indirect taxes. So once GST is in place, we do expect a one-off shock of increase in productivity growth, which can actually help India's outlook uh, going forward. So in terms of, uh, you know, emphasis, uh, we, we really think that the GST is a key reform to look at going forward. You know, uh, oil prices are subdued right now, giving the government enough fiscal space. Is there concern that if and when this trend reverses, the government will have a tough task. Uh, that, is, that is a very good point, because I think that India managed very well uh, when the prices were coming down. So it didn't just let the prices come down, and you know, that by itself would have had a positive impact, but it actually was very proactive in terms of cutting some of the petrol subsidies even before the oil prices declined, and then increasing uh, excise taxes uh, once the oil prices really started declining in earnest uh, about uh, 12 months ago. But uh, you're absolutely right that at some point, uh, you know, maybe not in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, I mean, I think that the outlook for commodity prices, given the global environment, is still not very strong. But at some point, uh, commodity prices will probably go up. So it's very important to prepare now. And in that regard, one of the areas that we think is quite promising is to look at more targeted uh, benefit transfers uh, to lower income households uh, in order to, to prevent the return of untargeted blanket subsidies. So the kind of move towards moving towards direct benefit transfer on the LPG side, or perhaps looking at direct benefit transfers uh, for kerosene, uh, and looking at improving the, the targeting performance of this kind of uh, public assistance towards the households that really need the assistance. Uh, we think that that's something that is going to be important going forward once the, the prices go up and once the cost of living uh, goes up and people start getting concerned. Uh, again, not, not something that we anticipate would happen in the next 12 to 18 months, but something that is worth starting to prepare for now for, you know, eventually when it does happen. How is the World Bank viewing India vis-a-vis -vis other emerging markets or its peers? Well, uh, India has now become the, the fastest growing country in the world, surpassing uh, China. Uh, so I think that in terms of growth, India right now is, is looking very good. Uh, in terms of uh, financial stability, I think that India has, uh, you know, had, that has been a significant improvement since the taper tantrum of 2012-2013. Uh, uh, reserves are much higher, covering uh, nine months of imports as opposed to six months a few years back. 
the current account deficit is much narrower. Um, I think that the, the inflation situation is much improved uh, since then. Uh, so I think that uh, India definitely has uh, improved quite a bit in its tax, its tax quad. Well, relatively, relatively speaking, in an environment where growth has been quite, uh, quite slow elsewhere, I think that India stands out as uh, one of the better performing countries. You know, the growth of 7% plus is enviable given world growth rates, but there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between uh, the numbers and the grand reality. Do you agree? Uh, that, that sometimes happens, and I've, I've worked in other countries where, where some of this perception happens. Uh, whether sometimes, you know, that it's the inflation rate or, or the growth rate. I think that, uh, you know, the, one needs to sometimes, uh, especially when the economy might be turning around, and where there, there is, you know, uncertainty in terms of the indicators that are coming out. I mean, so it's not just the, the conflict between perhaps what you're hearing from people on the ground and some of the macro numbers, but even if you look at the statistics that come out, you see you know, credit growth numbers being relatively slow um, at the same time that you see industrial production going up. So even the, the macro numbers, they can also be, uh, they can also sometimes point to two directions. So I think that you know, the, to answer your question more directly, I think that in, on, uh, first of all, one has to give a bit more time to see exactly the direction of the, of the momentum. Uh, India also has just rebased its, uh, its GDP series. So I think that it may take some time uh, for that to settle the, in terms of the, the numbers for us to get a, a very clear view of the momentum. But uh, on balance, I mean, I think that some of the, the data that is out there in terms of the increased capital expenditures from the government, the increase in the industrial production, the increase in uh, air frequencies, there are quite a few of these uh, high frequency indicators that are pointing to some improvement. But you know, at, at the same time, we also, have not, we also cannot ignore the, the other indicators that are pointing uh, to things going in the other direction. So I think that also we will need a bit more time to have more clarity around the, the direction of the forecast. So on, on balance, we are, we are confident, but we acknowledge that there are some uncertainties and risks. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Good talking to you.